Do you want to know how you can be an inspiring female leader and still be able to influence people, give your team some feedback, and still be liked and get a bunch of stuff done? How can you lead and not offend or cause resentment from your team? The goal of this video is to give you a few key principles that you can implement today. And if you become a more likable leader, more people are going to want to follow you. Here we go. Welcome to the Executive Mom Show. Today's topic is how to be a female leader that inspires. What can you do today to be more liked as a leader, more respected, and still give your team feedback and have them do some of the things they might not want to do? How do we do this? So I am basing these principles off this book that I love and mention often because it is so helpful. Uh, it is written for men, in my opinion, so I've put a little female twist on it. Unfortunately, I do not agree with everything in this, and if you're following along, we're at part four, I believe. Part four, uh, he calls it, uh, be a leader how to change people without giving offense or arousing resentment, right? Because nobody really enjoys being told what to do. So we're going to try to figure out how can we do this. And unfortunately, um, I do not agree with principles one and two. So we're going to skip those two principles. And But I do agree with principle number three. So I have a deck today. I have a deck. I'm a visual learner and there's a lot here and I think it's important. So I made a deck. You're welcome. All right. So how do we do this? The first principle is number three. Again, I don't like one and two. I don't really agree with those, so we're going to skip those. Talk about your own mistakes first before criticizing others. And really, criticism is feedback. Feedback is a gift. It actually is a gift. I have been given some really helpful feedback in my career, and you need to do this as a leader to invest in your people and help make them better. Um, so I feel like maybe I should change that word criticizing to feedback, but Sometimes feedback feels like criticism because it is. So this principle is to really share some of your own mistakes. Like maybe you made the same mistake and the goal is not to necessarily hijack the whole meeting and talk about yourself. However, I have learned so much from my former leaders, specifically female leaders who maybe had made the same mistake and they realized the impact of that mistake. And it helps me be really open and interested to learn. And that's um, why I think this can be really helpful. And I'm going to take a look at my notes over here to make sure um, that I don't miss any key principles. But yeah, it's not nearly as difficult to listen to feedback if the other person um, begins humbly, right? It's so frustrating when someone comes off. We all know this person. I know this person. I am so perfect, and in order to be perfect like me, you need to do this. Super annoying, not inspiring. I'm not going to listen to your feedback. I don't like you, okay? I'm not listening, so don't be that person. Um, and again, stories are super interesting. Tell a story. Make it short. Let's, let's get to the point. I think clear is kind, which is why... You know, I'll, I'll just give you a sneak peek. Principles one and two are not about being clear. It's kind of like the... Ooh, I don't want to say a bad word. The sandwich. You know the sandwich where you say something nice and then you give them the feedback and then you say something nice. We call that the S-H-I-T sandwich. Don't serve that up. That's kind of what number one and number two are recommending. And I'm just not a fan. I think clear is kind and just tell the person they're an adult. They can handle it. And I would appreciate someone just being straight with me. Moving on to number four. Ask questions, don't give orders. Nobody likes being barked orders. And nothing is more frustrating when someone, say there's an issue, a project, problem, whatever, and someone tells you to do something that you have already done or already tried. It is maddening. This happens all the time, every day. Your first question, if you're a leader, is to ask what have you already tried? Listen, they probably tried 
your low hanging fruit idea that you think is so brilliant. They probably already tried that and maybe there's a reason why it didn't work. Then ask them, what do you think could be a good next step? Ask them some questions. They're probably going to be the same as yours and you just have to be a little patient as a leader to wait for them to get to it. They probably thought of it and they probably will share. You just have to wait and ask a question. So don't be jumping in and barking orders, especially when they already did that and for some reason it didn't work. Um, so let me just see if in my notes there's anything else that helps. Yeah, orders can cause resentment. Yeah, like, oh, I have to do this because so-and-so said I do. And maybe they don't agree with it. Maybe you need to know why they don't agree with it. I would have a little more of a conversation. And asking questions makes the order, in the end, easier to take. And it also stimulates some creativity of the person whom you ask. So they're a little bit more likely to accept this order if they're brought along a little bit. And especially if they have a part in the decision. Bring them along, people. You need to slow down. I am probably one of the most impatient people that I know. Super impatient. But I hide it well. Because I know these things. I read every self-health book there is, which is why I'm hoping to share this with you because I've read a lot and a lot of this has really helped me. So I've learned to take the patient's pill and kind of do these steps and it really helps ease the whole thing along and ultimately I get to my outcome faster than if I just shoved it down everyone's throat like I would like to do and be like, hey, yo, get back to work and do this thing. Stop complaining and do what I say. That's what we want to say. It doesn't even work with your kids, people. We are born this way. We are born this way <laughs> and it's not going to change. So you need a better strategy. Number five, I really appreciate this one. Let the person save face. Someone on your team totally blows it. You do not need to gaslight them. Okay. Why? Why? I see this happen. It makes me so sad. You know, we run over people's feelings um, in finding fault and criticizing. Uh, kids, oh my gosh, don't criticize your kids in front of people. I did that once to my son and he was just heartbroken. I was like, dude, I was telling you to tie your shoes. Like, what's the big deal? Mm -mm. He was just mortified. So just be thoughtful of people's feelings. You know, tie, I didn't think tying your shoes was like a sensitive topic. But I wasn't thinking, you know, he struggles tying his shoes and I made a big scene in his mind. Anyway, just be really careful of people's feelings. You do not need to blow them up, especially in front of others. And you know what? Here's what you can do. One of my favorite bosses that I worked for, if I made a mistake, there was one situation where I totally blew it. I just blew it. And we were in a meeting with a bunch of other leaders and I was like, Oh, crap, I blew it. And my boss <laughs> stepped in and was like, we blew it. She took, she took the blame. We blew it. My team blew it. But she took the blame. And then after the meeting, we talked about it. But I was like, you know what? I will follow that woman wherever she goes because she had my back. And she let me save face. And, you know, in the scope of things, I blew it in a small way. It wasn't really that big of a deal. But to me, oh, my God, I was just so absolutely mortified. Um, do that for your people. They will follow you wherever you go if you do that. So let them save face. Um, let me just see if there's anything else key in here. You know, even if the other person's totally wrong, uh, you only destroy their ego by causing someone to lose face. So let's just, let's keep everyone's egos nice and healthy and um, the workplace will be much better. Number six, praise improvement. People are motivated when they get some, some praise. <laughs> it feels good. I, I get a compliment and I'm just like thrilled and I can't wait to do more. So really focus um, on the behaviors you want more of. Give praise for those behaviors. And your folks will be motivated to keep doing that. Again, works great with your dog. Not that we're dogs, but I'm just, you know, giving you another example. 
You give them a treat when they do the right handshake and they'll keep shaking, <laughs> right? They'll keep going. And same with kids. You know, I tell my daughter, oh my gosh, you did such a great job wiping that down. And then she starts wiping the whole kitchen down. She can't wait. You know, Look, mommy, woohoo, right? So uh, we really enjoy the praise and it's motivating. It's much more motivating. Now, number seven, this is my favorite. This is my favorite. No one's doing this. Why don't you do it? Give the other person a fine reputation to live up to. So when someone, okay, here's an example. I'm going to give you an example. When someone is not performing, and so I have to read my notes so I make sure I don't miss anything. But when someone's not performing, tell them, you know, hey, if it's true, this has to be true. You are the expert in your field and your work in the past has been exceptional. Um, I think you'd want to know that I'm not happy with your work right now. It doesn't live up to your past standards. Now, if someone told me this, I would listen. I would listen because first of all, they think of me up here and I think of me up here and I want to stay up here. And this reputation, I do not want to let you down. I'm not going to want to let you down. Oh my gosh. And I'm grateful that you're telling me because you know I can do better. You know I am better. So you're almost giving me a compliment at the same time. And there's just respect. You're showing that you respect the person for their ability and I'm going to respect you back. And boy as heck am I going to get back to my standards. And I feel appreciated too because you know what? You noticed. You noticed that I'm fantastic and had been in the past and you noticed that I've dropped And I need to get back up there. This is my absolute favorite. Give that one a go. Um, Number eight, make the feedback seem easy to correct. This will just be a little more encouraging to your folks. I think clear is kind. Clear is kind. Be so clear. Sometimes we try to jazz up the feedback so much with the sandwich. And it's really confusing. And then when someone starts off, yeah, don't do the sandwich. I'm, I'm digressing. We already know. The sandwich is terrible. Nobody wants to eat it. Um, but when someone makes it seem like this is not such a big deal, because guess what? It's not that big of a deal. It's not that big of a deal. They can fix it. They can totally fix it. So um, here's an example. There was, in the book, there was an example of a man who was getting married and he needed some dance lessons because he was not gifted in that area. Um, The first dance teacher he went to was super discouraging. (laughs) She told him, you were better off forgetting everything that you thought you knew about dance. Uh, It totally took the wind out of his sails and it took all the fun out of it as well. So then he dumped that teacher. Good for him. Then he got a second teacher. And she said to him, she made it seem easy to correct. You have all the fundamentals and all you need to learn is just a few more moves. She pr- and she praised what he did right and she minimized the errors. And he was so motivated and it made it seem fun again and like he could do it. So if you tell your kid, let's talk about kids for a second. But if you tell your employee or spouse or child, that they have no talent for a certain thing and are doing it all wrong, you've completely destroyed all of their incentive to improve. It's really sad. This is like the dream crusher. Don't, do, don't be the dream crusher. It makes, breaks my heart. Um, it's probably the opposite. I have an example. Okay, I have a real example of this. I love doing laundry. I love it. But sometimes... My husband wants to help with laundry and that is something I do want to encourage because, you know, once a week there's probably four loads that need to happen. So if he wants to do one of the loads, you know, it's not, I'm I'm not going to lose sleep over that. However, I tend to criticize how he does it because he mixes all the colors or he puts my, you know, my delicate things where they shouldn't go and I get really angry about it. And so when I criticize him, what does he do? He drops the basket and he pieces out. He's a little nicer than that, but not really. Um, So if I I want him to 
do the laundry, don't criticize how he's doing it. Hide your stuff. Now what I do is I hide all my stuff. If it's, you know, lingerie or something I don't want, I hide it so he'll never find it. And I leave out all the kids' clothes that I don't care about and he can wash them all. And he can bleed all those colors together and it will be just fine. So if I wanted to give him feedback on laundry, I think that's a bad idea. This should be a whole nother tip. Don't give people feedback <laughs> on things you want to encourage them to do more of. However, at work, that's not possible. We all need to give people feedback. So in the work setting, make it seem easy to correct and they'll be more motivated to correct it. Number nine, this one's a little tricky. I'm gonna have to go into some details on this one because I think it's a little tricky. So how do you make people glad to do what you want them to do? All right, so I have a few examples to talk through this. Um, so let's say, let's say that you're at work and there is a job that someone they want to do, say they want to work on this project, and you don't want them to do that project, you want them to do their day job. I need you to do your day job. I don't need you to try to save the world today, okay? So what you can say is make them feel too important for that job or that project. Um, we're just gonna go with saving the world. Oh dear, I don't know. But the example can be, hey, I really need Joe to work on the Saving the World project because you're an expert in X and I really need you to do X. It's super important that we get X done by the end of the month. Might help. Might help, especially if the project's not saving the world. But it, you can make them sound a little more important and happy about doing their day job because that's what you need them to actually focus on. Um, and then another example, this is a little different, but uh, if you're going to promote someone, let's say you have, you're going to promote someone to VP, right? That is an honor all in its own, but you can take this to a whole nother level. You can actually make the person feel that they're doing you a favor by accepting this great honor, uh, or it would, it would be an honor, like you're doing, you would do me a favor if you would accept this position, and it's like a double whammy. Um, you're going to make them so ha They're going to be happy to be a VP anyway, but there's probably a boatload of extra work that comes with it. And if you kind of ask them like you're doing me a favor if you take this job, it's even more motivating. What you don't want to do, I'll give you an example of what you don't want to do. Oh, you want to be a VP. I'm not sure. Okay, we're going to promote you. We're going to promote you to VP. I'm just, you know, it's a stretch. Someone said that to someone before. It's a stretch for you to be a VP. That is terrible. They're getting promoted and now they feel terrible. Why would you do that to someone? Don't do that to your team. Absolutely the most demotivating thing I've ever even heard and now they're upset about becoming a VP and now they have to do extra work for you and they're gonna be pissed off at you forever probably. I would have a hard time. I don't hang on to things but I would not like that comment. So let's be smart when we're promoting people or if you're asking them, let's say it's not a promotion. Maybe you're asking them to do extra work. You can say, hey, you're doing such a great job. I trust you with this new project because I know you can get it done well and I need it done well. Can you do this for me? You just kind of really made them feel important and like they can do it. So those are some, I hope that helps with this last one. I feel like this last one is um, tricky. And then I'm going to say, these are some, some quick six guidelines. Let me escape out um, of this here. So here's some six guidelines to keep in mind when trying to change attitudes or behaviors. Number one, be sincere. Don't ever lie. Don't ever promise something you can't give. Uh, you need to be responsibly uh, responsible and reliably reliable. There you go. Number two, know exactly what you want the other person to do. Clarity. Your team needs clarity. If you're not sure, don't ask. Okay? Wait till you You need to be so clear. It's confusion is a problem in the workplace and it happens all the time. Um, be empathetic. 
ask the ask yourself what the other person really wants so have a little bit of empathy before you start trying to change everybody's behaviors here this is the fourth one consider the benefits the other person will receive from doing what you suggest and you could highlight that try not to sell it too much but this is not a bad idea to try um, and then number five match those benefits to the other person's wants. want to know what they actually want and then you want to match these benefits to the other person's wants and then number six um, when you ask for the request do it respectfully and you can also frame it in a way that highlights their benefit so by using all of these principles you're more likely to change attitudes and have people happy to change their attitudes and beliefs. I hope this was helpful. Now, if you're going to be an inspiring leader, you need to look like an inspiring leader. And you're going to need some lipstick because we all look a little better with some lipstick. This is one of my favorite lipsticks. This is L'Oreal. I have this on now. Uh, L'Oreal Paris. You can buy this at CVS, Walmart, Target. Probably not the gas station, but you never know. You could take a look there too. I think this may have been $6. I'm not sure. I will link it below. This color is 102 Watermelon Pump is what it's called. And it does. It gives you a little bit of a pump. Um, kind of, you know, fills your lips up just a little bit. Uh, it does not sting. What I like about it is it stays. It feels, um, my favorite part is it feels like a chapstick. It feels like chapstick, but it kind of stays on. And it's, um, it feels nice. It's a good one. Definitely a good one. I hope this was helpful. Have a great day.